This is an Elon Musk signature edition wall charger that I ended up winning from Matt Farrell of Undecided Fame. It's actually, yeah, never mind, look him up. And this is what it looked like when it arrived in the mail. Inside, Matt had left a nice little note, and beyond that, I found all the components I would be using. In this first bag, there are things like caps and gaskets to cover conduit holes we are not using. There are screws and nuts, and then there are base plates. You use this base plate if the conduit will enter the charger from the rear or bottom, and you use this base plate if the conduit enters through the top as the charger needs to sit further off the wall. Of course, there are also instructions. This wall charger is functionally identical to the standard Tesla wall charger, but it includes Elon Musk's signature on the front, and it's only available as a reward in the Tesla referral program. This project does involve knowing how to properly install high voltage, high current power. And if this is something that you're not comfortable doing, I highly suggest you seek out a licensed electrician to do this project. Since the conduit would be entering through the bottom of my charger, I used the flat base plate, which I leveled up and marked the hole locations. My old brick wall ended up being extremely brittle, so I created a plywood back plate, which was placed behind the base plate for the charger. Before you all go all crazy in the comments, I do realize that drywall screws aren't made for this. I should be using some sort of construction screw. With the base plate mounted, the next step is to remove the T10 Torx screw at the bottom of the charger's front cover. Then you slowly and very carefully pop loose the clips all around the front cover. I started on one side and began to work the cover loose there, and then worked around the cover being very careful not to damage it. Eventually it let loose though, and I was able to get to the weather tight cover underneath. There's six T20 security torque screws that you gotta remove from this cover. We're now into the guts of the beast, but before we get too carried away, let's mount this thing on the wall. If you already have the base plate installed, it's super easy to install. You simply slide it into the tabs and attach it with the occluded torque screws. Since power would not be entering the wall charger from the rear directly out of the wall, I had to use a conduit. I chose to use a one inch PVC conduit. I like PVC conduit because it's cheap, it's easy to cut and install. You simply line everything up, slide the pieces together and secure them to the wall. In my situation, the power comes from a sub panel that's located in the garage. Before you work on a sub panel like this, be sure to shut the power off to it. If the current supplied to the wall charger is higher, the car will generally charge at a faster mile per hour rate. However, there are several factors that limit how much current you can supply to the charger. In my case, I was limited to 50 amps because of the wire size between the main panel in the house and the sub panel in the garage. After installing the appropriate 50 amp breaker, I finished up the conduit between the charger and panel. The first step of running wire was to push my steel fish tape through the conduit to the charger. Next, I needed to match the wire type and size to the circuit breaker. Since I would be pulling up to 50 amps, a 6 gauge wire size was appropriate. When you're pulling wire through conduit, you really want to use a stranded individual conductor wire as it pulls much, much easier than solid wire. In the US, the THHN type is widely available at large home improvement type stores and general hardware stores. Although my one inch conduit was a bit oversized for the wire sizes I used, I was glad for the extra room as I had a few bends to navigate. It also gives me the option to increase my wire size in the future if I decide to upgrade the service lines to my garage. I ran four wires from the sub panel to the wall charger. The first was ground, which I attached to the ground bar in the sub panel. Next was the neutral, which got attached to the neutral bar. Finally, the two phase wires attached to the circuit breaker. After I ran the wires to the charger, I realized I didn't need the neutral, I capped this wire and pushed it out of the way. The largest terminal block in the charger is for the two phases. There are two screws in the block which you loosen before inserting the wires into holes in the side of the block. It's really tight in there which makes it quite difficult to push the wires into the holes and on the first try I didn't back the screws far enough out and the wires weren't secure. So I backed the screws a little further out and reinserted the wires and then tightened them. I gave them a little tug to make sure they were secure. I found the ground wire a lot less tricky. It simply attaches to this little aluminum block and then that's all you have to do wiring wise inside the charger. 
Before closing up the charger, there are two dip switches and a rotary dial to deal with. The dip switches have two configurations depending on whether the charger is powered by two 120 volt phases or a single phase of 240 volts or greater. My charger and most chargers in the US will be wired using the line to line configuration. The rotary dial sets the maximum current that the wall charger can draw. This is simply a matter of finding the appropriate position for the installed circuit breaker. In my case, it's a 50 amp breaker. With these switches set, I was ready to reassemble the case. There is a ribbon cable that gets attached to a circuit board on the internal WeatherTight cover. After installing the cable, the WeatherTight cover was reattached using the six T20 security torque screws I removed earlier. This WeatherTight cover allows the wall charger to be used outdoors, although I expect most people will install it in their garage like I did. Finally, the Elon Muskified front cover was clipped back on and secured by the single torque screw at the bottom. At this point, I flipped the new 50 amp breaker and the charger went through its boot sequence until it finished and displayed a solid green light through the front window. If you guys would like more detail on how I did this, you can go to either my website or instructables.com and I will have step-by-step -step instructions posted on what I did and also what I didn't do because there are some variations to this installation. If you guys are also interested in learning a new skill, you should check out, no, you don't need a subscription to learn new skills. You just need to watch more YouTube videos like the ones I'm gonna be putting out in the future. So if you subscribe and check back often, I will have a lot more videos coming for you guys. I hope I see you in the next one.